tried the last time I traveled was actually just kidding. It's Tuesday evening. I am just finishing up packing because I'm leaving early tomorrow morning. I'm actually kind of repacking because I realized I had done a very bad organizing job. But I am heading out of town tomorrow for five days, six days. Wednesday, returning Monday morning. And I'm actually going to South Carolina for two, three days, and then to New York for a couple of days to visit my sister. And I've actually been traveling quite a bit this year, since January. So a little bit of backstory here. I started riding horses when I was six years old and did a lot of riding and competing growing up. I kind of ended up taking a long break after I went to college and started working and everything, and I took about 10 years off but I always wanted to get back into it. And I finally did in 2017, started riding again, competing. I actually got a horse at that time. And unfortunately that horse, she has been injured for most of the time since I've had her. So I didn't get to ride that much over the past several years, but it's always been something that I have wanted to do more of and kind of put off just because of my fatigue and just like really trying to figure out my health issues and feeling like it was too hard to add that in and it was going to be too, too much energy output, but it always felt like it was kind of missing from my life and this year I really decided that I wanted to get a little better about pushing myself to do things that I want to do or that I know I enjoy but that I have sort of not done or put off doing because of my energy levels or how I'm feeling or feeling like I needed to focus more on my health and like only doing the things that were going to move me forward in terms of healing. Kind of coming to terms with the fact that, you know, I don't know if I'm ever really going to feel totally better or how long that will take and I can't just sort of sit around waiting for some potential day in the future when I feel differently. That part of also what is going to make me feel better or bring me more enjoyment is doing some of these things even if there are some maybe consequences of not being able to focus as much on my health or my healing or maybe there's like a little bit of drain on my energy but that overall like the net benefit of doing these things is going to be good for me in the long run so to that end i started leasing a horse this year so that i could ride more and do some competing and i actually ride with a trainer in south carolina that's a whole nother long story. So I'm going to South Carolina to ride for a couple of days and get a little practice in. I have another competition coming up in a few weeks. So I'm gonna go there, ride for three days, and then go from South Carolina to New York where my sister and brother-in-law live. And they have two boys, so I have two young nephews that I have not seen since Christmas. And so it'll be really fun to spend a couple of days with them. But that too is something that I would sort of imagine doing or think about like, oh, it'd be so fun to go to New York and visit my sister and see my nephews, but that feels so hard because I'm going to be so tired and travel is exhausting and, you know, how, if, how am I going to handle it if I get there and I feel really crappy? Like, those were kind of the thoughts that would go through my mind and what has held me back from doing some of these things in the past, but I'm trying to kind of embrace that discomfort. I'm gonna feel fatigued either way, whether or not I travel or ride or go see my sister or whatever. If I'm staying home, yeah, I might be, have a little bit more time to focus on 
feeling better or doing the things that make me feel as good as possible, but I'm still going to feel fatigued or I'm still going to have all these same symptoms whether I'm here or doing other things that I want to do. So I might as well give it a shot. And I found that the more I do these things, so since I started riding again at the beginning of the year and traveling more, the more I have done it, the easier it has gotten and the more I've been able to sort of find a routine that works for me, which is also partly why I end up packing so much stuff because I do like to sort of try to keep as much of the routine that I have at home going, even if I'm living out of a hotel room or on kind of a different schedule. So I end up bringing a lot of stuff with me to sort of like things that make me feel a little more comfortable, help me feel like I'm still doing everything I can to support my health, especially because I do find travel sort of exhausting and stressful and like overstimulating and making sure that I have ways to regulate that and sort of try to keep my body in as good of a place as I can has also been really helpful even if it means I have to like pack an extra huge suitcase. So I'm just going to finish packing up everything tonight, try to get as much sleep as I can. I have to leave here at about 6.30 tomorrow morning to get to the airport and I will check in with you guys then. about 6 15 I have to leave here in about 15 minutes to head to the airport just finishing packing up the last few things and we will be off to South Carolina All right, we've made it to the rental car. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. I'm in the parking garage about to leave the Charlotte airport, head to South Carolina to the barn where I will ride the horse that I am leasing. Have about a 90 minute drive now to go. Definitely feeling the fatigue at this point after just doing the whole airport thing this morning and getting here now I kind of drifted in and out of sleep on the plane but didn't get that much rest so I always feel pretty worn out by the end of a travel day especially when I'm coming here and then after flying here driving the 90 minutes to the barn riding going to the hotel kind of getting unpacked all of that I feel pretty exhausted by the end of that but also kind of like a little wired because like I'm in a new place and been kind of overstimulating. I find travel and like airports and stuff to be really overstimulating and kind of exhausting, but then also like it sort of has like gotten my nervous system on alert. So it takes me a long time to wind down the first night in a hotel and like don't always get a great night's sleep in a hotel or at least not the first night. I also actually have a Zoom meeting kind of late this night. So we'll see how that goes, but uh, we'll catch up with you guys again once I'm at the barn riding and then we'll head to the hotel.
morning. It is the next morning now. I'm in my hotel room, obviously. It's a little before 7 a.m. Um, I wanted to do a little update last night, but by the time I got done with my Zoom meeting late, I was really tired and just went to bed. So it is now Thursday morning. I'm getting ready to go. I'm gonna go do a little workout, but I'm also gonna get outside, get in some sunlight this morning, kind of try to reset my circadian rhythm. It's an hour ahead here, so it's not like a huge time change or anything, but I still try to do some of the things that I would normally do at home as kind of part of my routine, especially like morning routine. Just helps me feel a little more grounded. It feels easier to transition to a new place. And also then when I go home to kind of like transition back home, if I'm able to keep up with some of my regular routines. So I'm going to go get outside this morning, get a little bit of sun, um, get into the gym and just get moving a little bit, get loosened up and then going to go ride at about nine o'clock this morning. All right, I'm just about to head over to the barn to ride this morning, feeling a little better after getting some movement and a little bit of sunshine. I actually slept pretty well last night, which is always a little bit hit or miss the first night for me in a hotel. But one thing that has been really helpful that I tried last time I traveled was actually just getting some earplugs to wear at night in the hotel. And it just kind of blocks out like the little weird noises and things that kind of, at least for me, seem to kind of keep me more alert when I'm in a new situation and like the air conditioning goes on and off and it's just kind of loud and there's some traffic noise outside. So that actually seems to really help. I did pretty well with my sleep last night. I still feel like by the end of today I'm going to feel pretty tired just from the travel, from riding, being out in the heat. It's pretty hot here. All things considered, with all the stresses of travel, I feel pretty good this morning. And going to go ride now, and then actually I'm going to ride the horse that I am leasing. And then after that, I'm actually going to try a horse that is for sale at another barn down the road. I am leasing a horse right now, as I said, but it's just sort of a short-term thing to keep me riding and kind of get me back in the groove while I am also in the process of like looking for a horse that I could buy that would be more of a long-term fit for me. After I'm done riding, I'll head back to the hotel and I will go over a couple of the other things that I do when I am traveling just to try to kind of like support my body and make sure that just the stresses of traveling are not going to deplete me even further or sort of set me back. I do try to keep up as much as I can with the things that I know that are helping me feel okay, even just like physically on a day-to-day -day basis, but also just kind of keep my body in a good place and moving forward on this whole healing process. So I know that travel can be difficult in a lot of ways and I have a lot of things that I do when I travel just to try to keep myself in the best place possible. So when we get back to the hotel a little bit later, I will go over some of those things. It is later in the afternoon now. I am back at my hotel. Definitely feeling the fatigue at this point. Just kind of like a full body tiredness and not even like tired, not in the sense that like I feel sleepy or want to lay down and take a nap or something, but just sort of weary. Like my whole body feels really heavy and lethargic. And that's just kind of when it gets a little more challenging to deal with because I just really don't feel like doing anything. But I'm here in my hotel room. I actually am leaving tomorrow afternoon to head to New York to spend the weekend with my sister and my nephews. So this is a little bit of a different trip than I usually do. Usually I would just be coming here to South Carolina to ride for a few days and then flying home. But because I am adding on this trip to New York, this 
trip to South Carolina is a little bit shorter. And no matter how long my trip is or how short my trip is, I do try to do a lot of things along the way that will help me feel okay during the trip and then also like not sort of feel like I'm negatively impacted by it once I get back. So if I travel and I'm like really not sleeping well or if I'm like not taking any of my supplements and kind of get off of that routine or not getting any movement or whatever, then I feel like it's much, much harder for me when I get back home to kind of get back into my usual routine. So there are a lot of things that I do even when traveling. I have a little mini like travel air purifier that I'll bring to the hotel room. I have this little blue light free lamp so that even when it's like nighttime, I can use this little lamp instead of having the really like bright, harsh hotel lights. I bring all of my supplements or most of my supplements. If it's a really short trip, I might just use that as a chance to take a break for a couple of days, but usually I will bring most of the supplements especially the things that I feel like are more effective when I stay on them on a regular basis. I even like bring my own pillow often. I have a little travel pillow that's really great. I have a little travel yoga mat that I can use in my hotel room so I can stretch out at the end of the day. I have been opting for hotels lately over Airbnbs, partly because I like that most hotels do have a gym so I feel like I can get some kind of a workout in while I'm away, but also because I found with a lot of Airbnbs, I struggle to find places that don't sort of trigger some of my sensitivities to like chemicals or scented products, things like laundry detergent or air fresheners, even like mold and mildew, especially here in the South. I have found that even if I ask people ahead of time about all of these things, oftentimes I will find that I feel like I am having a reaction to that kind of thing in an Airbnb and I just have much less chance of that happening in a hotel. But that's also just like another thing that can make it a little bit hard with traveling is like, where can I stay that is likely to not make me feel uncomfortable? Obviously sleep is a huge thing for me when I travel. If my sleep quality or quantity gets really compromised, that is gonna be a pretty big struggle for me to A, feel good, but just sort of recover from. So I really do try to do all the things I can to ensure that my sleep is going to be as good as possible. Even like knowing that the day before I travel and usually like the first night in a hotel might not be great, but also just trying to then like reinforce things like getting morning sunlight, getting some movement, doing some kind of wind down routine at night and really taking time to set myself up for a good night's sleep. That is also really helpful. It's really tempting like in a hotel room to just like watch Netflix or like keep the TV on or have the bright lights on and all those things and sort of totally forget any semblance of an evening routine or a wind down routine before bed. But the more that I can t give myself that time and the opportunity to really be in a good place for sleep, that helps a lot. And honestly, all of these things that I do, like, yes, it takes some time and effort. And it might even just be that it's more of a psychological benefit of like, I feel like I'm doing all of these things that are going to make me feel better or sort of keep me healthy on the road. Having the supplements and the air purifier and my pillow and all of these things, even if it's more of like a placebo effect kind of a thing and it's just like me feeling like I'm making an effort to do these things, I guess that's still gonna be a benefit in the end. So I, I feel like it's worth it even though it does take a bit of extra effort on the front end. And the one other thing that can be a bit tricky with traveling is food. Knowing that I have things that I can eat that are gonna make me feel good. I don't love like eating out a lot. It does, just does not make me feel great. And I also do like I'm gluten-free and pretty much dairy-free and have some other things that I kind of avoid, which can be a little bit more challenging for eating out or even like sometimes going to a grocery store. For example, here where I am now, I'm in a pretty small town. There's like one little grocery store, but it can be really hard to find things that like good quality protein. I will try to bring some things with me just to kind of know that I have good protein options on hand. I have things that I can have for breakfast. I try to have enough things on hand that I know that I can get through the day and feel pretty good and then kind of like supplement with what I can find and get some fruit at the grocery store. But I do try to plan ahead and like bring some things with me as much as I can just to just in case or just to know that I can like maybe get through that first day if I'm not gonna be able to get to a grocery store right away. So yes, I do quite a few things to try to make travel feel a little bit easier on my body, keep me feeling as good as I can, help me kind of make the transition 
back and forth and not feel like I'm totally off of my usual routines and to just again kind of psychologically feel like I am doing the best I can to kind of keep moving forward on any kind of healing progress that I am making and not letting travel be a situation that sets me back. So tomorrow morning I'm going to go ride again in the morning then just kind of pack up and head to the airport. From Charlotte I will fly to New York and we'll be spending the weekend with my sister and brother-in-law and their two kids, my two nephews. I'm really excited to see them. I haven't been there since Christmas, but for now I'm just gonna try to get another good night's sleep before another day of travel and I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Good morning, it is now Friday morning, it's about 10.30. I already went and rode this morning and I'm just back at the hotel packing up, ready to head to the airport and go on to New York. Still feeling fairly worn out today. Fatigue is pretty strong already. On the one hand, I'm sort of glad that I just have to like drive to the airport and get on an airplane, I can rest a little bit, but also the travel process can feel pretty overwhelming. So we'll see how I feel by the time I get to New York. It'll be nice to get there and settle into the next hotel. And then I will see my sister and everybody tomorrow morning. Good morning, it's now Saturday morning. I am in New York, in Brooklyn, getting ready to go see my sister. It's about 7.30 this morning and I've been up for about an hour. Yesterday was kind of a long travel day. By the time I got to New York, it was about five o'clock and it took an hour and a half to get from the airport to the hotel. It's like eight miles. <laughs> so that was kind of ridiculous. But by the time I got here, kind of got settled, had something to eat, etc. I was pretty tired and it took me a little bit to wind down. This morning after I got up, I got outside for some sunlight, took a little walk around the block. Now I am back in the hotel room. I drank some electrolytes. I'm gonna go check out the gym and then come back, have my little hotel breakfast, and then we'll head up to my sister's. It's about a 15 minute walk and we will see what else is going on today. One other thing that I works really well for me in terms of like being able to wind down and fall asleep in a hotel room is I always try to have a good book that I am enjoying reading that like if I need to, I can just read for a really long time before bed and that always inevitably makes me really sleepy, especially when I travel and I know that I'm gonna be like a little overstimulated or like in a new place and not as easily, not going to fall asleep as easily. I try to make sure that I have like a book that I'm really into so that if it takes me a while to wind down or start to fall asleep that I am, I have something good to read and that really does help. I'm gonna go check out the gym and we just get a little bit of a workout in and then we will get on with the day. All right, I just got back from doing a little workout in the gym and the hotel breakfast situation is always a little bit sad. <laughs> so I always bring stuff that I can make for breakfast. I brought with me some gluten-free oats, chia seeds, and protein powder that I just mix together the night before with some water and just let it soak overnight. There's a little mini fridge here so I can stick it in the fridge. And then I just picked up some raspberries from a little grocery store next door. This gets me like 30 plus grams of protein and 10 or more grams of fiber so that I don't have to try to rely on options at the hotel. There's very little options for gluten-free, dairy-free, or if you're trying to just sort of like avoid processed foods and trying to find some protein. So I always bring things with me. I still have these um, silicone, like a silicone bowl. I also have a little cup that is the same brand. It has this top, which is nice, so you can store stuff in it, you can put hot or cold food in it, and it actually collapses down, so it's like really easy to pack. And then I have a little travel silverware set too, so that I don't always have to use tons of like plastic silverware or heat things up in like paper cups and bowls. This is another thing that I always bring with me when I travel and it really comes in handy.
Um, that was quite the two days in New York. That was a lot of activity, but it was really fun spending the last two days with my sister, my brother-in-law, and my two nephews who are two and about eight months old. So there's definitely a little bit of controlled chaos the entire time, but it was really fun and nice to spend some time one-on-one -on -one with them. We packed quite a bit into those two days. We went to the farmer's market and we went to the Brooklyn Botanic Garden. We went to the museum. We did a lot of walking around with the two kids and pushing strollers and all of that. I'm definitely feeling it. I'm pretty tired. My body hurts quite a bit. My feet are really sore and just kind of I'm feeling pretty worn out. Yesterday I did, I just felt really sort of groggy and like my whole body felt really heavy. It was sort of hard to feel really enthusiastic about doing things. I just didn't feel like physically or mentally totally awake. It's been a while since I've experienced that, especially considering my sleep was pretty good. Like usually I don't feel that kind of like heaviness or fogginess, but it was actually kind of a good experiment or a good way to remind myself that like I can be feeling sort of worse than normal and still enjoy what I'm doing or still be on a trip and have fun with my sister and my nephews. And it doesn't have to ruin my whole experience just because I'm physically not feeling great, that both things can be true. I can be really uncomfortable and still enjoy my time. And I think that's something that kind of made me nervous for a long time and it was part of the reason why I put off doing stuff like this, like coming to New York to see my sister or even starting to ride again and knowing that I would be traveling or like spending a week at a horse show and like I might get to the point where I felt really exhausted and uncomfortable and I was worried that that was just gonna kind of make the whole experience not fun or make me feel worse or kind of set me back on my whole healing journey. Just didn't think I really had it in me to do that or to make the effort to try these things and see how I would feel doing them. I would just kind of have some anxiety around like what if I book a trip or go on a trip and then I'm just really uncomfortable the whole time and I have to deal with it or I really can't enjoy spending time with my nephews or spending time riding or doing whatever because of how I'm feeling physically. And this was the first time that I did kind of two trips in one where I went to South Carolina to ride first for a couple of days. Usually I would maybe go ride for a couple of days and just come home. So it would be a pretty short trip and it would feel pretty manageable. Since this time I added on the trip to New York, it was actually like kind of a good test to show myself that like, okay, I was able to do this travel to kind of fit a lot in on a, a short amount of time to experience not feeling great, super great physically and feeling pretty okay physically. So I'm really glad I did this trip and I tried this and kind of was able to see that even the stress of travel or for me the stress of sort of just being out of my normal routine, out of my home environment. I'm definitely a homebody. I love being at home. So it's always a little bit more difficult for me to kind of adjust being on the road. But just to see that I could do this, I could do the things that really bring joy to my life, even if it also comes with a bit of extra stress or a little bit of discomfort along the way. And overall, I do think that the benefits of doing these things of like adding something good into my life, even if it has some of these sort of slight maybe downsides, I think it's really worth it in the long run. And like, you know, years and years from now, I'm gonna look back and be so glad I did things like this and not regretting that I didn't do them. I'm getting ready to head to the airport shortly. I am looking forward to going home. I'm literally gonna be going right from the airport to the chiropractor, which will be great because I'm starting to get pretty tight and I feel like that will help me a lot. And I'm really looking forward to sleeping in my own bed tonight, just kind of being back at home. And I think that's the other thing that's sort of great about getting out of my routine or traveling and doing something different is that it really does make me appreciate even more being home, kind of having my normal routine and my daily structure that I really thrive on. And it just is a good way to get a little bit out of a rut and then go back and remember why I appreciate those little things. So yeah, it was a really good trip. It was a lot to pack into like six days, heading home this morning. I'm gonna be home for about a week, eight-ish days before I head back to a horse show in Aiken, South Carolina. So that will be my next adventure. But if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for continuing along. Leave any questions or thoughts below if you would like, and I'll talk to you guys soon.